Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Tim and Tim Talk. My name is Tim Kay, the Director of Productions with Argus HD, and with me, the always amazing, the fabulous, the impeccably dressed, of course. Oh, look at that. Look at you, Tim Kerbavis. Hey, Tim. It is great to be here with you as always. I'm Tim Kerbavis, the Technical Director of Talent Entertainment Audiovisual, and I am calling in live from Sacramento, California, because if we're talking about virtual production, we got to walk the walk. We don't just necessarily talk it. This is a lifestyle. We're committed to this virtual event lifestyle, exactly. aren't we? <laughs> so this is actually, exactly. this is one of, um, I'm excited. This is going to be our first series that we're going to jump into. You and I were brainstorming on topics. And uh, the more that we got into this, we we're like, we have to break this up. There's just so many nuggets in here. There's so many just little takeaways here. May I even yeah. go so far as to call this a master's class of virtual events a master class sim are we showing them some hacks oh i love it how many other buzzwords are we going to fit into this one here <laughs> basically um, we're just teaching them right like whatever these exactly, buzzwords are exactly call it what you want yeah i mean the language aside you know, jokes aside uh well maybe not all jokes aside we've been zooming our way through 2020 i'm gonna stick that pun in there tim <laughs> And, you put my uh, seatbelt on here. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm not yeah, getting right. out of this one. <laughs> but seriously, you know, 2020, 2020, we had a lot of the exploratory phases of virtual production, virtual events, and exploratory you know, is a nice way of we, saying that we were all thrusted into this, and we had no choice, <laughs> right? We had to virtual yeah. events or perish in the events industry. Exactly. You know, that was exactly that was that was the 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 imperative for all of us was to go to virtual production, and virtual events. And, you know, whether on the technical side or the event planning side, you know, I think we're all really going into this year with the need to really step up our game and, you know, basically put on a better production, whether that's, yep. you know, better technically or better audience experience or ideally both. Well, and and also also this is a, if you're a marketer, if you're if you're non-technical, this is going to be a great episode for you because this is a very budget friendly way to do this. Right. Some of these platforms exactly. can be really, really expensive. But this can, hack that can. we're going to show you, like if you're a marketer, just watch this through. You don't necessarily need to know why we're doing, but just know that it exists is going to make you, when you go to your meetings, when you pitch it to your team, you'll be able to sort of explain. Yeah. And then also maybe just, if you want, like here, well, I saw this on Tim and Tim talk. This is kind of what I'm talking about and use this as a way to launch your idea. Exactly. And with that, Tim, what we're specifically talking about is a hack, so to speak, um, to use uh, the Zoom account that you and your organization already have to not just host a meeting, but to host a conference. And so what we're talking about is yes. some very specific tricks in order to use a Zoom meeting at, so that you have that breakout room feature to host a broadcast general session and then breakouts to have a real multi-track conference. And this is absolutely fantastic, right? So we're elevating your production from a single track to a multi-track. You have your general session, you have your breakouts, you have as many as you could possibly fit within your account. Uh, we'll talk about sort of the, the pearls at the end of the episode of where you want to limit this to. But uh, all right, let's let's go. I think we set the, oh, before we jump into this though, let's, uh, I'm gonna set the stage a little bit of what they're gonna mm. see. So um, basically you're gonna have all the inbound, you're gonna have the presenters. They're all gonna be in this Zoom meeting, which is essentially breakout room number one. When we do these productions at Argus, we essentially call breakout room number one, the stage, right? Stage. That's a great way to describe it, Tim. Essentially using your breakout uh, as a stage to then broadcast back into your meeting. Cool. Well, let, let's go into it. Let's show them. We actually did our homework on this one, didn't we? Yeah, we did some homework. On the back. We called in some of our friends. Oh, look, oh. you might recognize those folks. <laughs> uh, here, here's friends. me. <laughs> I'm giving a presentation, as you can see, about nothing but buzzwords, you know, and I'm, I'm in this stage breakout room. We're actually taking this video, running it through uh, a broadcast system. So, again, this is remote. I'm presenting... Uh, here with Tim, you know, via uh, a webcam at home. And here we bring in our, our, our friend Mark here for the panel at the end. See, we, we have, have friends, one friend. <laughs> <laughs> but what we're doing here is taking this, this, this stage breakout and putting it into a broadcast switcher. And so here's a little behind the scenes footage that we took in the studio of, you know, our broadcast equipment 
taking those calls and switching them together into a broadcast. And now this part but is key, right? Because that. this unlocks all of the tools. You have now taken a basic Zoom event and now you've unleashed the full capabilities and power of a, of a production at this exactly. point. Exactly. And then we take that broadcast and put it back into the general session of Zoom. When I say general session, I mean the, the meeting, the main part of the meeting of Zoom. Like the lobby. And you can see... The lobby, exactly. And so here, you know, we've got our cameras on just for, just show off here. But in in, a, in this use case, you'd probably have everyone in your meeting with their cameras off uh, and just watching this general session in the main part of the meeting. And then we're going to the reason we're using a meeting is that what we do here is after this presentation is done, we, you know, wrap up, we'll go to just go to logo on screen and then uh, will basically assign everyone into their breakout rooms for the 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 breakout sessions or the this is sessions. where the real magic happens. This is right now what we're seeing is is sort of what makes this meeting hack so amazing right now because exactly, no one's leaving. Exactly. Everybody is in one right. spot. They don't have to go anywhere. Everyone's followed exactly. Everyone has followed the same link uh, to the event, and you know they're in. They watch the general session, and then we assign them into breakouts. And they all go into their breakouts. After this general, after the breakouts are done, they come back to the GS. We can un, you know, close the breakouts. And that's a really easy way to turn a Zoom meeting into a multi-track conference. And what's really, I think, the, the most powerful functionality of this, um, and because you and I, I mean, we do how many virtual events a week? That's a rhetorical question. You don't have to answer. We do so many of them that right. one of the sticking points that we get is when we have to move people around, when we have to give them a new link. Hey, please join Multiple here. Links. Please join here. Right. The beauty of this system is that they right. don't do anything. We do it all. It's kind right. of like we walk You're, them to the stage. We we say right. Yeah. Your audience stays put. You know they're just being brought in that of breakout rooms, but they only join one meeting, and that's definitely the key thing. There is it makes you, it makes it easier on your audience and, and in fact on your presenters. And, and speaking of sort of the audience, we're, uh, in my notes here, I see something called Zoom bombing. This was all Zoom bombing. That was one of those buzzwords of 2022. Oh. And I know we've all seen it. It's seen it like in some of the event producers right now hearing just of a Zoom bombing, it gives them a chill in their I know. back. Because... I'm sure you're all just recoiling here. <laughs> you know, and I, I really hear this concern. And I understand, Tim, why you're bringing this up. It's a real issue. And it really is important, you know, as always, you know, uh, to set the settings up correctly. And we're going to use some very particular settings for this kind of a setup. What we're going to do is in the meeting creation process, we're going to set it so that everyone's camera and mic are off and that they are not allowed to turn their camera and mic on. And you say, but they're going to talk. We're only going to turn the cameras and mics on once they go into the breakouts. When they join the meeting, they'll join with their camera and mic off by default. The only camera that is on is going to be the return feed from the broadcast studio. And not, and not to we, get into too many technical details here, but the way that that is set up, you can still unlock breakout room number one, which we're calling the stage, to have a camera and microphone on, right. while simultaneously turning the lobby off so they only can listen and see. Right, right. So, but the key there is when you create the meeting, you set those default off, off camera and mic off when they join and locked. And then you just manually assign those breakouts and turn those things on as the Zoom host. And I think, Tim, you know, that gets into the key thing this multiple roles here, Absolutely. right? There's clearly multiple people involved. This is not necessarily, uh, this is not a one person project. Let's just get that out of the way right here. Even if you're a nonprofit and you're tight on budget, you still are gonna need multiple hands on there. When we've done this with our enterprise customers, um, what we've done is we've had a couple folks in the broadcast and also we've had a couple on the client side. I mean, it, it could be, it's sort of depending on how big your audience is, right? So you're talking probably two to four, you know, at least on their side, if not more. I mean, if it's five, six, uh, right. everybody's really important here. So you're talking, uh, let's say six to 10 people in totality at, the, at sort of in the minimum of, of what this takes to pull off, which is normal. And when you say that, I mean, yeah, that's normal production. And I think one of the keys is, you know, this is still, we're still talking about a broadcast VR. production workflow. And so, you know, when we talk about six to 10 people, we're not really necessarily talking about, you know, actually all on one team. We're talking about, you know, uh, at the broadcast sort of technical side, you're really looking at sort of from signal flow top to bottom, someone to manage the, uh, 
incoming sources, so that's from our stage coming into the broadcast controller, and when that's typically a call manager type person is, is typically a role in these kinds of events. Then you've got your technician who's uh, actually cutting the show together, and you're typically going to have, you know, in the broadcast world, it's a technical director, but in, you know, the, the, the video switcher operator. Um, you might also have somebody who's calling the show, and you might have a producer in the control room as well. And then when we talk about folks on the client side, we're talking about kind of a mix of things. We're talking about, um, you know, particularly if you're using your own Zoom account um, and you know, it's on uh, your, your, your organizational Zoom account, somebody from your team is going to need to be in that Zoom meeting managing those settings. And so one of, the, that, one of those roles is the person to actually manage the creation of the meeting, but also the like assigning the breakouts, muting and unmuting, and kind of assigning those privileges as they come up and actually managing the Zoom specific settings. Now I can, I can, got... see, I can see some of, the, um, some of the like event managers and producers that aren't the technical folks is like, I don't have anybody like that. And fair, um, a lot of folks don't, but if you don't have that, then that's essentially where the technical team comes in and helps right, you out the third right. party. Like exactly. you do this on a day on day daily I basis. I do, I do. And what, what I do we for do this, this is for my, clients, for my clients that are, that are working with their own enterprise Zoom accounts is um, one of their team members will create the meeting and will set up uh, the meeting to start in a few minutes early and I'll join and then they'll just promote me to host because I'm not in their organizational account, but they'll promote me to host um, once I join the meeting so that I can manage those kinds of settings for them. But, you know, we talked about kind of the Zoom management, we talked about kind of the technical side, but one of the roles we haven't really talked about yet is kind of the stage management role, oh, Tim. Yes. That's where, you know, um, you know, in an in-person event, we have a stage manager or an assistant stage manager, often both, right, who sit with the talent in the green room, greet them, you know, get them ready to go on stage. And, you know, we're not necessarily doing hair and makeup in the online event, but there's kind of that double check before somebody goes out live role that still needs to happen, getting folks comfortable and ready to go on stage. Absolutely. You got the hair, you got the makeup, you know, and that could just be something that, you know, uh, you know, just a little straight. That's the like, oh, you know, hey, straight. you got a little cow lick. Let's fix that, you know? Yeah. Um, and mic and, just, and you video, know, too. Sure and, and audio, <laughs> like video, right. Somebody who's meeting with them before they go on stage and just making sure that their background looks good, their face is well lit, there's not that window open behind them, you know, the Roomba isn't running, making that noise in the background. Just kind of basic checks well, to I make sure that they're ready. Let's, let's, that's, I mean, we're going to probably, we're, let's talk about this, a future episode idea, because these positions are so important here. Uh, and we yeah. can sort of like do like a virtual event production 101 here, which I think definitely let me write that down here because that's going to be, I, that's a whole look, other episode. We, we, we've mentioned so many buzzwords and position titles and industry specific jargon, Tim. I think that's really important for us to go over in another we're episode. Gonna, okay. let's, let's definitely that down plan here. That it's yeah. another episode while making this episode, we're going to make more episodes <laughs> down the road. But exactly. Let's bring this one home because we still have one more important, important, important aspect to this. And that is, yeah. this is not an event that it can is good for all event sizes here. There is right, definitely right. a sweet spot where this hack works well. And there's going to be a spot where it's going to start, you're going to redline it here and you're getting a little yeah. risky. Let's talk about these numbers, Tim. What's the good yeah. event size for this? So I think this is great for kind of what we would call probably a smaller event uh, in a sort of 75-ish attendee, attendee range. I think you could do this for up to 100. Once you get over 100, particularly over 150, mm -hmm. it gets so unwieldy to assign those breakout rooms, which is a very manual process. It's going to take so long to get people in and out of breakouts that I really don't think this is a good fit for, for meetings that large. Um, but if you're looking at a meeting, you know, maybe this is an internal team meeting or, you know, a, a you know, a smaller audience kind of specific topic meeting where you want to control access, you want to have that discussion, mm -hmm. um, you know, but, uh, you know, it's, you want to, you want to have that broadcast at the beginning and end to kind of end cap the day. That's the kind of event that this intimate is good size for one more under the right. hundred. That fairly is definitely intimate the sweet event. spot. Yeah, yeah. And once we talk about events that over, and you know, as you know, I think we, we alluded to this when we were talking about this earlier, but for some of our clients, 100 may seem like a big event. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I think, right, I mean, I think that, you know, it really depends on your organizational size and, and kind of your, your, your event expectations. But, yeah. you know, that's kind of that sweet spot is that kind of under 100 size under, yeah. event. Once you're, once you're talking about 100, 200, 5,000 attendees, you're really looking at a different kind of platform. This is not and the right I tool. Think, this is this is another tool. Just, yeah, thank but, you for you know, watching. Tim, this is a, not for you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but I think we do have an episode coming up, Tim, where we're going to talk about some of those other platforms oh, and kind of how they've right over the night. Exactly.
Yeah, you know, so, absolutely. I mean, this is we're we're. Boy, we are prepared. Kudos for us. Let's pat ourselves on the back. We are going right exactly. into the, the next episode. Uh, make sure you guys, you know, stay tuned for that because we're going to start going into sort of, we're going to go into the platforms because uh, just to tease it a little bit, Tim, you and I, we basically hear of event names and event platforms probably six times a day, right? That's on the low end. Right. And, and, you know, we've talked about this. You know, every time a client calls, they say, you know, do you, do you, are you familiar with this platform? Yeah. And we're like, well, that's a new one. Um, you know, because there's so many that are, that are appearing and changing and evolving over the last year. And so I think, you know, that's going to be our next topic. Yep. But I think that wraps us up for today. All right. Well, hey, listen, I hope you guys learned something. You know, um, just to, to summarize this one here, this is an, a very, very powerful tool. It's the tools that you already have. It's, um, it keeps all of your attention attendees and your speaker in one ecosystem, all of right. the legwork and all of the movement are done by the technical crew, whether that's the production right. company that you've hired or whether that's your own company right. managing the actual Zoom meeting while the technical company exactly. is cutting cameras. Um, and then you can also bring them back to the general session for closing remarks and you know thanking everybody and recapping the day. Right. This is one of my favorite ones, Tim. And the, the beauty about this, great it, tip. it doesn't cost any more money. If you have a Zoom account, right. you're already paying for this feature. It's built into tools that you already have. You're just adding that broadcast polish to the existing tools. Cool. Well, I hope you guys learned something from this. Uh, listen, if you have any questions, if I, we tried to cover a lot here, but I'm sure that there's so many other like little questions or, or you want to reach out and ask us, hey, feel free to reach us out on these socials here below we check them would love to hear from you uh and also if you have you know future show ideas also if you have exactly. uh, if you think maybe a little bit of a nugget here would help you know one of your colleagues or you know you want to share this we're shareable aren't we tim we are shareable, you know, send us via email, you know, message, you know, uh, or carrier pigeon. We've had, uh, you carrier know, uh, you read that somebody could, could burn a DVD and mail it to somebody. Is that a thing we do anymore, Tim, in 2021? If it's not, it should be. Can we bring it back? Because we're retro like no. that. Yeah, let's, let's, <laughs> let's, let's leave DVDs in 2019, please. Please do. <laughs> well, that's all we have for today. We're going to thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. I'm signing off. I am Tim K with Argus HD. And I'm Tim Kerbavis with Talent Audiovisual, and we talked. See you later.